Hi everyone, welcome back. Drawing demonstration for you today. I'm um, just going to quickly run you through the, the kit that I'll be using. First of all, um, I'm going to be using Derwent sketching paper today. I've never used this before, um, so this will be a first time. Looking forward to giving this a test. Um, pencils, I'll be using an HB woodless pencil, which I'll use with a knife blade to um, scratch graphite powder out onto the paper and two wood case pencils, one's an HB and the other one's a 2B. Uh, the Koinor large clutch pencil, with big chunky lead in there, and that's a 2B lead. A um, couple of blending stumps, a good selection of erasers, um, large dough anti eraser, mono, um, sorry, the Tombow mono fine point eraser, and a Derwent pencil eraser and of course a needle bully eraser oh, and last but not least I've got an old watercolour hate brush here which I use for uh, brushing away bits of eraser and also for softening um, areas of graphite so that's all the kit that I'll be using today right let's get to it okay so I'm just scraping some graphite powder onto the paper um, it's going to be another landscape, trees, water, that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to put a bit of an emphasis on drawing foliage and grass in this one because several of you have asked for that. Um, and I thought I'd uh, make this video um, show you a few techniques for doing that kind of thing. I will be making more um, real-time videos on how to draw grass and how to draw foliage etc in the future. Because um, there's several methods, well there's quite a lot of ways actually of, of drawing it, so I'll show you those in the future. But hopefully, um, just for now, this will whet your appetite and uh, give you a little bit of inspiration and a few tips. Okay, so I've um, blended the graphite powder in, rubbed it in with a kitchen towel. I've not rubbed it completely smooth, I've left it fairly patchy um, to give a nice effect. And now I'm using the Derwent eraser just to draw in some tree trunks and some guidelines in the landscape just so that I know where I'm going. Um, it's all fairly crude at this stage but it doesn't matter. Um, we're going to sort of refine it as we go along. Just using the HB pencil now just to sort of fill in a few areas that I missed with the graphite powder um, and add a little bit of detail here and there then just softening it off and blending it in with the uh, blending stump trying to keep everything in the background nice and soft Now I'm just using the, um, the needable eraser just to pull out a few bigger highlights there. Um, that's going to be sort of a, a sunlit area at the back of the trees there. Um, I guess it's quite hard to sort of um, see what the picture is at this stage. Um, <coughs> that's going to be sort of a river bank that I'm just drawing in now, um, or a bank, bank side of the lake. Um, yeah, I know what the picture, what I want the picture to look like in my mind. Um, I'm, I'm basically working from imagination again, and, and um, it's kind of making this up as I go along. I have got um, a few reference photos at the side of me of sort of trees and forests and things like that, just for a little bit of inf inspiration. Um, but again, I'm sort of, you know, once I put the graphite powder down, I sort of follow that. I follow the marks that are left, and just think that kind of looks like a tree shape. So does that. Some of them are fairly intentional. Um, you know, I work the graphite powder to be a little darker in certain areas, you know, on purpose. Um, where I know I want the trees and the foliage to be a little bit darker. Uh, but it's not very accurate. Like I say, it's fairly crude. Um, but after that stage, um, you know, we're just kind of working in detail and refining everything and just slowly building the picture up. So I'm just using the HB pencil still and I'm just kind of drawing in the, the distant bank there. And there's going to be some reed beds kind of sticking out from the uh, right hand side there. And again 
again, just keep softening and blending all the time. It's still that um, sort of three step process that I use, you know, just apply some graphite, blend it in and then do some erasing and see what you're left with and then sort of work from that. Um, it should give you a really good start. And it's just really a case of repeating those three steps throughout the drawing, um, you know, at different intervals in different orders. Um, obviously the detail is going to get um, smaller, sharper, etc. as you come more forward into the picture. But it's still the same process, you know, put some graphite down, blend it in and erase. Um, you know, and as we're applying the graphite, we're using different grades of pencil to get lighter and darker areas, like now for example I'm using the um, the 2B Cohen or Clutch Pencil. It has a really thick chunky lead in there. Um, it's not been sharpened or anything, it's fairly round on the end. I've purposely left it like that so that it doesn't cut, in, it cuts into the paper um, too much. Um, it kind of sits more on top of the grain, uh, which makes it sort of easy to blend in and easy to erase. Um, and it's really good for kind of doing these background foliage um, techniques where it's kind of just little bits of light, little bits of dark um, and sort of softened off and blended in. Um, it's almost like an underpainting if you like. It's a lovely pencil to use, I highly recommend getting one actually. Just using a fine eraser there just to um, draw in a few fine little branches and a little bit of leaf detail just to sort of get me started and then I'll start filling in um, the right hand side of the trees there <coughs> using the same technique just kind of little circular motions and squiggles just to give sort of a random foliage effect uh, again, it's fairly crude because it's only going to be in the background. It's, we're going to raise over the top of that and then go in um, with maybe HB or even 2B pencil later on, um, you know, to get a few of the darker tones. Carefully drawing around some of the um, highlighted areas and things like that. So yeah, at this stage, you know, don't be too concerned. Just kind of think very basically, just about. Um, Getting the basic shapes in, um, just a little bit of detail there on the, on the end of the trees, um, but just generally the basic shapes, a few basic tones, and that will give us a great foundation to start building the detail on. I just keep working at it and just softening it off until I'm happy with the uh, the overall look of it. And I sort of come away from it, move away from that area, <coughs> and uh, start on the, on the background trees there. Um, sometimes you can get sort of bogged down too much with working on the same area all in one go, so I like to sort of move around the picture a little bit, um, work on it. Um, sort of slowly and build it up bit by bit um, but I've said before I think in a previous video it's okay if you want to work in a more conventional way um, you know, using grid methods and just filling in little squares at a time or if you like to sort of um, just work on one area of a picture at a time and get that completely finished till you work on another that's completely fine um, it's just that I tend not to work like that I'm, I'm very un unconventional <laughs> um, in my approach to things but uh, that's just me I guess but I'm trying to stick to um, just drawing these right hand trees um, just for your sort of ease of viewing really um, so that you can actually see how the foliage is built up a little bit more um, 
because I don't actually film when I draw the, the right hand trees. Um, there's no point, you've already seen me draw the left hand trees and it's exactly the same process that I use for those. So like I said, I'm trying to just stick to the right hand side at the moment, which is torturing me because usually, <laughs> usually I like to sort of, you know, work all over the place. But again, I mean, that's personal choice, that's up to you. You just, um, you know, do your chosen method, whatever you find easy and whatever works best for you, that's fine. And again, that's just an HB pencil there. Just starting to bring a little bit more detail few little darker tones just into the background trees you notice I'm, I'm blending all the time once I put that graphite down um, I go straight over it with the blender keep it nice and soft in the background and then gently pull a few highlights off and even blend those in a little bit just trying to define the edge of that tree there with the HB pencil. Um, because I'm aware that some of the four brown branches are going to actually hang over that. Um, so I'm just putting a few darker marks. It's probably not easy for you to tell at the moment, but um, as, the, as the picture progresses, it'll all become more apparent. using a Derwent um, pencil eraser there as well to uh, pull out the highlights on the trees. Um, it's one of my favourite bits of kit actually for um, erasing for highlights on trees. It gives a lovely foliage effect. Um, but you can you can kind of get the same effect if you scrunch the end up on a needable eraser, get a nice fine point on it and just keep dabbing away um, over the graphite. It'll pull some nice little spots um, and kind of leaf shapes and things like that up for you um, but I just, for some reason I just like the the, the Derwent um, eraser it just seems to just work for me and I'm also using a Tombow mono eraser which is a very very fine point on it um, but that it gives a you know a finer line a finer mark but it's not quite so sticky as the uh, the Derwent eraser I have to just touch the Derwent eraser on the graphite and it pulls it off. So it makes it sort of very quick to do um, highlights on foliage. Now I'm just using the HB pencil just to put in a sort of a shaded side um, on the tops of the trees there. And it's also sort of helping me to understand where some of the branches are going to fall across uh, over the tree trunks. It is very time consuming, so you know, it's more time consuming than it is difficult actually. It's like I say, it's really just a three part process, just um, repeated. Um, but it can get very time consuming, so that's really what you've got to prepare yourself for, you know, to sit down for a couple of hours, um, you know, to, to get this kind of detail. I mean, there are quicker ways of doing this. I mean, you can use um, a battery eraser, for example, um, but the marks won't be quite so fine, um, small and detailed. And the battery erasers can really pull a lot of um, graphite off straight straight through to the paper. I mean, that's, that's really good, that's great. That's kind of what you're looking for. Um, but those kind of, repetitive marks from the battery eraser. I mean you can use the, the eraser on its side or right on the tip and you can you can get a little bit of variation in the marks but 
Um, sometimes it just looks a little bit too repetitive for my liking, but um, but again, that's up to you. It will save you a lot of time if you want to use one of those. I sometimes do, particularly on uh, larger scale drawings. But it just generally means I've got to go in um, with a pencil and draw around some of the marks just to reshape them a little bit. Um, so you probably know better off really, <laughs> um, time wise. But it's like I say, it's entirely up to you. I'm using a 2B pencil now just to get a few darker areas in. Um, that's as dark as I really go actually in this picture, just a 2B and an HB. Um, when you've been drawing for a while, you, you tend to just stick to just a very limited amount of pencils. Um, you know, I mean, there's some pictures I draw with literally just an HB pencil, and I just vary the pressure uh, to get the light and the dark tones. Uh, but one thing you've got to be careful of is that you don't press too hard um, with an HB pencil um, to try and get you know your dark tones because you will destroy the grain of the paper, um, and things will start to look a little bit messy. And also, you can get that graphite shine, which a lot of people don't like. Um, you know, if you press too hard and you work areas too much, you'll, the graphite will start to shine and it can look a little bit, a little bit unpleasant. But I find that you know a two B pencil, you can get, um, you know, some pretty dark tones with it. You know, just a two B pencil on its own. And you don't really encounter that graphite shine. It's when you start getting past the the 4B, the 5B, that kind of thing. That's, that's when you start getting more into the uh, the shiny, softer graphites. Personally, I'm, I'm not too bothered actually about that. I'm kind of used to it. I've just kind of look at it as that's the nature of graphite. But I know it can put a lot of people off. Um, yeah, so I kind of tend to just stick to you know a small handful of pencils. For any one drawing, so I'm just kind of messing about now, just drawing that that bank in, um, just trying to get it to look, you know, to have the right perspective. Um, trying to get the lights and darks in the right place, um, and you can you can basically see the the kit I'm using and how I'm doing it. There's no real need for me to explain that. <clears throat> Now I'm working into the foliage um, a little bit more with the 2B pencil, just just establishing a few more darks. Um, you know, I won't go mad at this stage, I'll just put a few in and, and see what it looks like and then work on a different area um, and then come back, have another look at it and think, okay, it's a bit, a bit lighter, a bit darker, a little bit more detailed, whatever. I find if you, you know, stay on an area for too long, starts you know it bogs you down a little bit it can get a little bit overwhelming so I often find that um, if you walk away from your picture go and look at something else for 10 minutes go and have a, a drink or whatever um, then come back with a fresh eye um, that can really help you sort of see the picture in a different way um, you don't get so bogged down with you know what you're actually drawing you, you tend to come back with a nice fresh eye full of inspiration um, and that can be really helpful particularly doing you know this monotonous kind of um, foliage detail you know so yeah I, I do recommend that you know probably 20 minute um, drawing session and then a 10 minute uh, break and come back with a fresh eye I think the drawing took me about um, five hours four and a half five hours in total so you can imagine it'd drive you nuts, wouldn't it, if you had to <laughs> sit down for that long, just doing these little tiny marks all the time, you know, erasing little leaf shapes and then filling in in between with a pencil. Um, but there's no, there's no way around it, you know. Like I say, it is time consuming. So, um, you know, I often let my drawings go over a few days, just a couple of hours each day, uh, I spend on them. You know, at the end of the day, this is a hobby. It's to be enjoyed, and if I'm not enjoying it, well, there's no point in me doing it. So, um, I don't like to get bogged down 
or get stressed out with it. I just like to have fun and relax. Um, you know, so if you're finding this a little bit tedious, just just put it to one side, leave it till the next day, and then come back to it. You can see now where I've put the highlights on the trees and I've gone back in again with the darker pencil. Um, wow, that was a big change of light there. <laughs> uh, I'm working in natural daylight now before I was working in the evening um, in an artificial light. But you can see now um, I've worked on that tree a little bit more. Actually, I've worked a little bit more off camera as well. But it's the same uh, process. Um, but I just added more highlights um, and just kept going back in and drawing around them um, with an HB pencil and a 2B pencil um, and if it looked too hard I'd soften them off or erase it I'd just keep working at it until I was happy with the result and it's that same those same three processes that I use all the way through you know put the graphite down blend and erase and it's just repeating that over and over again So now I'm working on the background trees. I'm being a lot more, um, lot more conscious that I've got to, you know, keep this nice and soft. Um, so I'm looking at the foreground trees as I'm drawing the background trees. I don't want the background trees to look as detailed, obviously, you know, as the foreground trees. I want them to be a lot softer to give the illusion that they're set further back into the picture. So it's a different foliage technique, really. Um, there's more blending involved. I'm actually using the um, the blender, the graphite that's on the end of the blender, to actually draw with, to actually draw some of the, the darker areas, um, and then go in with the eraser and pull out a few highlights here and there, and then soften those back as well. Because you don't want them to be as white or as light um, as the highlights on the foreground tree. So they've got to be um, just softened back a little bit. Another good tool for doing that without actually moving too much graphite um, it's a nice soft watercolour brush um, natural hair brush like a goat hair brush hake brush is what I use um, just to rub over the, the graphite several times you can press quite hard actually with a really soft hair brush and it won't kind of move the graphite too much it'll just gently very subtly um, just soften it off just nicely Whereas if you tried that with the um, blending stump, it will work, but you have to be very, very gentle with it. But, um, I mean, you can pull graphite from one end of the paper to the other with a blending stump. I mean, you can really move some graphite with one of those things. Um, so just be careful when you're doing your background trees. Just keep it nice and gentle if you're using a blending um, stump. Um, I, I do recommend using a softer brush. I mean, sometimes I get you lazy and just kind of, just keep going with the blending stump but it's a lot safer to actually use a very soft brush you know you won't rub the picture away which you do stand a risk of doing with the, uh, the blending stump so now I'm just kind of working out the shape and the form of these trees and the branches um, just establishing the lights and darks Just gently blending some of the darks in with the, with the, uh, the very small uh, blending stump. And when it's all done, that's when I shall use the brush just to go over it and just soften the whole thing down in one go, just very subtly. At this stage, I actually didn't like the um, the left hand side of the picture, the extreme left of the picture where the the distant trees are just showing through that sort of backlit area there. So it was very distracting. So right at the end I decided to sort of crop that and uh, kind of frame it just up to the first foreground um, tree trunk there. Just made for a much nicer composition, much much you know much easier on the eye. It's kind of confusing because we've got that little light bit there in the middle 
and then we've got the the light bit there on the left hand side and it's I don't know it's just made for uncomfortable viewing I think so I decided to uh, crop that left bit off so I'm still working at these background trees I don't want them you know completely sort of misty or soft I still want a reasonable amount of detail on there you can see there I'll just soften back with the brush um, but I still want um, you know a good amount of lights and darks and to be able to tell that they are tree branches there it's not just kind of one misty uh, shape or anything like that um, yeah so it's, it's that trade-off all the time it's that balance that you're trying to achieve um, you know the amount of detail without it clashing with the foreground trees you can see there I've, I've um, completed the the right hand trees there um, off camera it was exactly the same method that I used um, for the left hand side so there's no real need for me to show that um, it keeps the video nice and short as well so now I'm working on the, um, the water now on the banks drawing in some of the darker areas on the reed beds kind of shape that that, uh, that bank in the background there just kind of send it back a little bit further just made for a nicer composition <clears throat> so I hope that was helpful to you the ones that wanted to see how I drew foliage I know it wasn't uh, much of an explanation or very detailed um, it's quite difficult with the speed drawing but you can actually slow the video down um, I think there's a little square or something on the bottom of the video if you click on that you can alter the speed of the video um, but like I say I will be making um, some more real time uh, demos on foliage and, and drawing grass um, in the future so uh, yeah just bear with me, I'll, you know, I'll get them done as soon as I possibly can. I'm just using the HB pencil again. You've probably noticed now, I've, I've changed from the um, the yellow HB pencil, which was a Dixon Ticonderoga, um, to a Derwent pencil. Reason being, um, I keep getting bits of, of grit, bits of clay in the Ticonderoga pencils. Um, so if you watch my video about the Dixon Ticonderogas, you know the best pencil in the world video, kind of uh, regretting making that now I, I take back what I said they're not as good as a Derwent pencil at all um, there's, there's too much grit in them if you've bought some of these and you've experienced the same let me know because I'm not sure if I've got a bad batch but the last two pencils that I actually used I got probably three or four lumps of grit in each one um, and I've not had I can't even remember having any grit in a Derwent pencil um, so yeah I was, I'm kind of a little bit disappointed with them to be honest but I'm going to use them but let me know you know if, if you've bought some of these um, I'll be interested to know if you've experienced the same problem anyway I'm using the HB pencil um, sort of horizontal um, shading strokes there just to try and sort of emulate what's you know above the water now. I'm just trying to draw in the reflections now um, usually I kind of draw the reflections in the other way to get an illusion of depth but um, this is just another way of doing it you can do this sort of horizontal um, shading technique and it works fine for water and as you can see I'm uh, blending it and softening it off as well and then going in again with the eraser um, to put some highlights on the water little ripples um, and just emphasising some of the reflections a little bit more You see, I keep repeating myself, it's that same three-stage process um, all the time. So if you're a beginner and you just don't know where to start, you know, just do that, that three-step process, and you'll be well on your way. Just kind of scribbling in a little bit of um, shrubbery there. Just at the back of the trees. shadows a little bit <clears throat> right, 
So now I'm kind of thinking about um, what I'm going to be doing in the foreground. Um, you know, without a reference picture, I'm sort of making it up a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm just using the 2B pencil there just to darken off some of the some of the reflections and some of the water. Just to give the picture a little bit more punch. It just looks a little bit sort of insipid there, so I just thought maybe 2B pencil just um, just to darken it off a little bit, just add a little bit more to the picture. So now I'm using the um, the Needable Eraser. I've kind of flattened it on the end. I'm just putting out little highlights here and there. Just literally trying to find my way around this foreground of you know um, what's going to look best. Just trying to work out the lie of the land, um, you know where the shadows are going to be. So I'm just kind of slowly building up, just. Um, you know, adding and taking away again, just, you know, what I think looks good. And if something looks a bit too, uh, too light, I'll just, like there, I'm just going in, in that left hand corner there, just darkening it off a little bit, it just seems to add a little bit of balance to the picture. I'm just kind of blending it in with the surrounding area. A little bit of texture there. I'm starting to put a little bit of detail in, a little bit of um, grass here and there. Just little flicks with the pencil, just to start with. Just until I'm just happy with the way it sort of looks. Um, you know, I'm prepared to change at any minute. You know, I'll put those pencil marks down. If they don't look right, I shall just erase them and do something else. Um, so I'll just start fairly loosely, just put in a few little grass strokes here and there, just blending them in. Um, standing back and just seeing what it looks like. Does it look, you know, does the land look natural? Is the grass making it look like there's too much of a hill there or something like that? Um, I'll just go in and adjust and get the dark tones sort of established to where the shadowy grass is and, and the lighter areas are where the high points in the grass are. And now I'm going in with the, the um, the Tombow Mono fine point eraser and just doing a few more grass strokes, just little flicks up um, just for the highlighted areas of grass. Now even at this stage I'm still uncertain um, about what this is going to look like. Um, sometimes I can't actually visualise what the, the end result is going to be so I just kind of um, just do my best and just kind of find my way around the picture as best as I can, just literally by just doing these little grass strokes, thinking would a highlight look good there, let me try, I put it in, no it doesn't, I'll take it out. Um, but obviously it's a lot easier when you're copying a photo, but for this, I'm um, just kind of finding my way around a little bit. And again, you just saw that I was just kind of softening back with the, the brush. That can really help actually, because the highlights that you pull out, um, the little grass stroke highlights that you pull out, um, when you go over them with the soft brush, they just take on a little bit of graphite. <clears throat> it just kills the white a little bit, not too much, just softens it back just a little bit. And then you can go over um, with the eraser again and pull some highlights over the top of what you've just done. And you're starting to slowly see the layers building up. And then when you go back in, um, as I have done now with an HB pencil, and start just emphasising... Um, some of the grass uh, strokes a little bit more. Um, now we're starting to get contrast with the lights and the darks um, and it's starting to take shape. And again it's a case of just repeating that, um, just kind of soften it over with the brush so we've already got some lighter areas which have been softened over previously and then some highlights pulled over it and then they get softened over with a brush and then you go over again, pull a few more whiter highlights out and go in again with the HB pencil. Still doing the grass strokes, um, just little flicks up and down. And then just keep softening back and that will slowly build up layer by layer. Um, this kind of illusion of grass. I mean what I'm doing is very, mm, I'd, I'd guess sort of impressionistic really. It's not, um, I wouldn't in any way call this uh, realism at all. 
Um, it's, it's just very impressionistic. Um, but it does give a nice illusion, a nice effect of grass. And if you keep going, building these layers up, you know, with the lights and the darks, just gently softening them back, you will actually eventually get to something that looks quite realistic. So that, all that is is just an HB pencil for the dark areas. And it's starting to sort of give the shaded areas of the grass, which is now giving a little bit of shape um, to the tufts of grass, if you like. You can start to see um, sort of shapes appearing in the picture, and you just kind of go with it. If it looks right, you know, just emphasise it a little bit more. Obviously without, you know, overdoing it or anything. I guess really I'm kind of an opportunist um, drawer or painter. You know, I kind of just... <laughs> like I say, throw the graphite down, see what happens, and then just just go with whatever I see. Just jump on any opportunity. If I think that looks good, that looks like a little um, tuft of grass. You know, I kind of emphasise it or whatever. Um, you know, and I guess it's that's all part of creativity as well. So yeah, it's not you know it's not a very easy method to teach how to draw grass. So it's just just that same process, um, of just layering up and layering up without overdoing it, without going too dark or too extreme with anything. And you can see there, look, I'm just keep softening back with that hate brush. It's a lovely, nice, soft effect without um, destroying the work you've done. It's pretty much that's it now. I've kind of finished the picture. Just tidying up around the edges with the eraser, so I've got a nice straight edge. Um, I didn't quite put the picture in the frame there, but what I'm actually doing, I've, I'm, I've just decided just to go over the grass with a kneadability razor and just soften some of the areas and lighten some of the areas off a little bit. Well, there's the finished result. I hope you like it. I hope it's been helpful to you. Thanks very much for watching, uh, watching, watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.